Hey everyone, welcome to One Little Coder. We are going to learn about an amazing text speech system. I wish this was my voice. This would have uh, helped my channel blow up because I would have had a very amazing native English speaker voice, but that's not my voice. So in this video, we're going to learn about something called Parler TTS. This is a text to speech system that did not gain a lot of traction very surprisingly but it is one of the most powerful systems and also gives you a lot of flexibility. I'm going to show you how to run this on your own GPU or in my case, I'm going to use Agile. Agile is like Google Collab. Main thing about Parler is uh, the kind of flexibility it offers and we're going to try out a lot of different things during the course of this video. I'm going to show you the step-by-step -step code of how you can run this and then we're going to play with a different system. First, to begin and start with, Parler TTS is actually being released by Hugging Face but I think this is uh, an implementation or reproduction of a work from a different paper. So the original paper is not from Hugging Face, but the model that they have released is from Hugging Face. And it comes with a true Apache 2.0 license, which means you can basically do anything with the model. And also it's not just the model, they've released everything. They've released how to fine tune your own model, they've released how to train the model. So they basically have released everything. But I'm going to show you only just the zero shot where we are going to just use the model and create a tech, uh, create a convert a text into audio. But if you are interested, we can probably look into fine tuning in the future. So what is Parler TTS? A very simple description. Parler TTS is a lightweight text to speech model. So when they say lightweight, there are two different versions. One is a mini version. The second one is a large version. The mini version is the 2.3 billion, sorry. The large version is a 2.3 billion parameter model and the mini version is an 880 million parameter model. According to some notes by Hugging Face, this model can be also used for streaming. What is streaming? For example, like you want to take an audio uh, text, like what ChatGPT does, before even the response is completed, you can stream the word output. And while you're doing it, you can also stream the voice. And that is what streaming here is. So it can also do streaming. So TTS model that can generate high quality, natural sounding speech in the style of a given speaker, gender, pitch, speaking style. So there are a lot of things you can change. It is a reproduction of the work from the paper, natural language guidance of high fidelity text to speech with synthetic annotations by Dan Lid, Simon King from Stability A and Eidenberg University. So contrary to other TTS models, a parallel TTS is completely open source. Um, so basically you've got the data set, you've got the pre-processing training code and everything that you want to run this under permissive license. So the very simplest thing that you can do to run Parler TTS on your own computer is just to do pip install and then install it from the GitHub repository. If you are on Ma Apple Silicon, there is like a slight change that you have to do. I think you have got to install the PyTorch, which is compatible with CPU, but I'm not going to just do that here. So let's jump into the Kaggle, Cola Kaggle notebook. So this is a Kaggle notebook. And as you can see here, I've already enabled my accelerator, which is to say that this notebook has a GPU, NVIDIA GPU. And of course, this is a Python notebook. So um, if you are new to this interface, I will link this in the YouTube description. You can just click it and start it. But if you just start like a new Kaggle notebook per se, then you have to enable the accelerator, make sure that you've got the language selected, which is Python, and also make sure that you have got the internet on so that you can install the libraries. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to install three different libraries. The Parler TTS just di directly from GitHub, Hugging Face Transformers and the sound file just to process the sound file. Once we have installed those three uh, and uh, this particular image of Kaggle already comes with Torch, otherwise I would have told you that you have to install Torch as well. So if you're doing this on your local computer, you don't have PyTorch, maybe you have to install PyTorch as well. So import Torch imp from Parler TTS, import Parler TTS for conditional generation. So to generate uh, that output audio, but condition on the prompt. From transformers, import auto tokenizer just for tokenizing the input text. Import sound file as SF. Then you select this device. So if you have got a CUDA available, which in this case we have got a GPU available. So we can say CUDA zero is the device that I'm going to go ahead with. But if you do not have CUDA available, then you go ahead with CPU. And then you start downloading the model and then move the model to the device, which is uh, CUDA in our case. So you, we are downloading the mini model in this particular case, so which is like the 880 billion parameter model. And uh, you can see here, it downloads like a close to four gigabytes of model size. So we download the model and then we download the tokenizer. The model is being downloaded from a parlor TTS 
for conditional generation. So if you're used to like hugging face transformer ecosystem, it follows a very simple, similar API structure. Once that is done, so we have downloaded the model, we have downloaded the tokenizer, then the next thing that we are going to do is we're going to do two things. One is the prompt, like the input that you want to be uh, TTS, text to speech, or the input for which you want the v uh, voice output. The second is a description, which is the most interesting part about Parler. So unlike a lot of other systems here, you can describe in natural language how your audio output should be. So by default, Parler actually generates with a random voice. But what they have also done is the team has done is they have also trained it with a bunch of voices. For example, if you do not specify any description like uh, with a name or anything, it will generate a random voice, like a random female voice or something or a male voice. But what they have also done is they have generated 34 speakers for consistency, this particular checkpoint that they've released. So there are names like John, Gary, uh, Laura, Mike, Leah. So we have got these names, which we can use to condition on a particular voice. So that every time you get John's voice, every time you get Laura's voice. So this will help, for example, if you're creating an audio book, you wouldn't want this uh, to have different voices I mean, the voice modulation is fine. Like the voice itself shouldn't be different for each chapter. Like the person who is listening would go mad. So this is very helpful. So a couple of names, you can just stick to a name, find out the name and then start using it. And another thing that you can also do is you can say that voice, whatever the voice is, in this case, John or something. And you can also start defining the attributes of it. For example, you can say John is monotone. So John's voice is monotone, it slightly faster in delivery. So you can say what kind of voice, like other than just taking John's voice, you can say how is John's voice. And the second thing is you can also define what kind of other sounds. For example, you can say the very clear audio is there, like for the highest quality audio, very noisy audio. So you, if you want, like, let's say you want to simulate like a crowd noise, or you want to simulate like an environment where people are sitting like with a lot of background, uh, not a studio setup. So then you can say very noisy audio. And you can also use punctuations like uh, the full stop or comma and all those things to actually um, control the uh, prosody of generations. I don't know what does prosody means. What is prosody? Let me search, look up prosody. Uh, patterns or rhythm and sound used in a poetry. Okay, basically, if you want to, I, I would call it tempo. So if you want to control the tempo of uh, the speech, then you can use punctuations, which is something that we would see and then try. And other than that, you can just basically control the speaking uh, speed, the gender and all those things with the prompt in itself. And that is the excellent part of it. So if I were to recommend you to use this particular library, this is primarily the main reason why I would recommend you to use it because the way you can control this is quite amazing. I mean, it's not like parameterized, it's still like a description that goes into a model, but still it is quite amazing the fact that you can do all these things. Once we have the prompt and the description, we are going to take the description and uh, tokenize as uh, input IDs and we are going to uh, tokenize the prompt as prompt input ID. So we have got two things now, the input IDs and the prompt input IDs. The next thing is quite simple. So very similar like every other hugging face transformer generate, we're going to do model dot generate model is something that we downloaded already and model dot generate takes input IDs and prompt input IDs and it uh, starts generating the final output like the audio array. And then you write down the audio array as a wave file. And we have got the wave file. So what is the input? So the input technically wouldn't be in the training data because I took it from a blog post just I read it yesterday. So it says in the high stakes world of tech interviews, something, something, and then it goes on. Uh, the only thing I felt in this particular audio is at one particular point, you would see that this audio clip is repeating. So either intentionally or unintentionally, let's let's listen to it. So we have got just displaying the IPython output. I'm going to play it for you and then we're going to listen it. In the high stakes world of tech interviews, candidates often feel like they are the ones being scrutinized. Their every word, project and decision analyzed to the nth degree, but here, but here intentionally or unintentionally or unintentionally or unintentionally. It done you all this tea for a company present a polished front, but as a candidate, you need to dig deeper to one cup. As you can see here, I feel like maybe like the apostrophe has messed up the, um, the generation, but again, like there are different kinds of audios I tried and in which I did not find it like something wrong. For example, the start of the video. So here is like, Hey everyone and all those things. 
and I feel like it has managed to generate it well. And I also gave an attribute saying John's voice is exciting. I'm not sure if it was exciting, but at least you can see the difference. So in, in this, the one that you listened, John's voice was monotone. Now you're going to listen where John's voice is supposedly exciting. The speech system where you can control. Hey, everyone, welcome to one little coder. We are good. It, it is definitely exciting. So what I can do is now instead of John's voice, I can probably start with Laura's voice. First, I have to change it, the prompt and the description, and then convert, encode it. Once we have uh, the tokenizer output ready, then we are going to generate the final output uh, where we are going to generate the audio and then store it inside this particular WAV file. And then we are going to finally play the WAV file or display it an audio player within our Jupyter Notebook environment. So this takes a few seconds uh, because the number of generation is very less. Play it. So it's, in, I, I just overwrote the same file. Hey everyone, welcome to One Little Coder. We are going to learn about an amazing text to speech system where you can control a lot of different voices and their attributes. Which is, which is very good. So now what I can say is Laura's voice is, um, let's say soothing um, and can be used for, um, let's say meditation. I'm going to say the same, like we're going to go ahead with Laura's voice, but we have changed the attributes of the voice, how we want it to be. And I'm going to regenerate again, which will take a couple of seconds. And then we are going to display it. While this is happening, the team has also put together some inference guide where you have got like some tips about how you can make it faster. So one is, uh, one is about using SDPA. The second one is about compilation. So if you are doing compilation, maybe you have to do multiple uh, different audio clips. Like you have to generate it again and again to see the difference. And then you've got the streaming. So if you were to use it for streaming, how can you use it? So they've got like the entire code if you want to use it for streaming. And also like, let's say you've got like uh, multiple samples, you want to do a batch generation. This is extremely helpful if you're going to do it for audio book or something then you can do it as well. So technically this model itself has been trained uh, based on audio audio books. Now we have got this. Let me run this once again. Play it. Hey everyone, welcome to One Little Coder. We are going to learn about an amazing text to speech system where you can control a lot of different voices and their attributes. I'm <laughs> not very sure if it was soothing or uh, can be used for meditation, but it does a pretty good job. And uh, there was also no background noise. And I'm going to just say has a lot of noise. Let's run this, run this, run this, and run this. And just like the way I'm running it, you can take the Kaggle notebook and then start running it. Um, it's not going to take a lot of time. And you might have also noticed when we change the voice from exciting to soothing, the number of seconds, like initially it was eight seconds. Now it became like 10 seconds. So that is a delta that, you, you know, it has increased. I don't know why did I play that again. Hey everyone, welcome to One Little Coder. We are going to learn about an amazing text to speech system where you can control a lot of different voices and their attributes. Honestly, I didn't find any background noise here and I almost felt like this voice is probably better for me. So what I would do, like if I were to use it is like use the description that works fine for me and then try it with different voices like Laura, John and all the other voices that they've got like the 34 voices and then see which one suits for me and then see for consistency. The only uh, catch here is that like, I think, like I said, um, there was something missing. I'm not, I, I, my guess is like probably it was due to apostrophe or, um, you know, symbol that it could not um, uh, recognize. But again, what I would do is I would like, first of all, take the, uh, take the sentence. If I were to do it for audiobook, I would like have a text pre-processing, uh, let's say pipeline, which would clear up all these things and then send it to speech to text. Uh, sorry, text to speech and then see how the final output is. The other thing is like, I would probably try it out with the larger model as well. Like, I mean, there is a huge difference in the model size that could actually mean something. So I would, uh, I would try that as well, but either way, even the smaller model does a pretty good job. And for, for a couple of tests that I did, I think this is excellent. The model comes with uh, Apache 2.0 license, not just the model, the entire repo. So you can f fine tune it for your own language or uh, whatever that you want to do, you can do it. I've not tried it with a different language yet, fine tuning. I'm not sure if it will work, but for English, for your accent and for your stuff, uh, I guess this should be like good enough. Um, if you were looking for a good open licensed text to speech system, thanks to the Hugging Face team for releasing this amazing model. See you in another video. Happy prompting.